Alright, how does ratio show up in this syllabus? Ratio shows up. in the syllabus in mainly in this first section of the syllabus specific objectives 14 18 and 19 in computation and numeration ratio proportion and rates just comparing divide the quantity into given ratio ratio proportion of no more than three parts so you could you wouldn't get four you get four things in a ratio you just get three up to three two or three solve problems involving concepts in number theory including ratio rate rates and proportion it's also mentioned in statistics, but the ratios in statistics is more talking about the scale, the, you know, the nominal scale, the ratio scale thing, which, which didn't really have anything to do with this ratio we're talking about here. How does it usually appear in exams? So in exams, we get real life examples and each one of them take their turn. So it's like 30, uh, 33 and a third percent, one third for each. Real life examples, best buy. You know them questions which one is the best buy and they give you two options on one way this amount and cost this amount and one way this amount and cost that amount that that best buy questions we're going to do all the last 10 years of ratios in this video so you'll get a good idea and i'll also leave the handout on my website the ratio handout with all the ratio questions on the website so you can give it a try maybe before you finish watch this video so you can put a pause on the video after you watch the theory a pause do the questions come back to the video watch me mash up the questions hopefully and make no mistakes them kind of thing so either you get a real life example either you get the best buy which one is the best buy or you get the standard ratio question where they literally say they share up a sum of money in a ratio between these three boys and which who and, and when they ask you that there's normally three things they want you to find they want you to discover the ratio by itself which is like rare or they want you to find the value of one term in the ratio like how much peter get how much money peter going to get or they want you to find out how much money all together or some kind of combination of the three so that's how it usually appears in exams as i said we're going to do all the exam questions for the last 10 years in this video but before i do that i just want to give you the key ideas and you'll see them repeating over and over again as we do the questions three keys the most important thing is finding for one uh, this is really the only key you know <laughs> the others is sometimes happen sometimes you want to find the sum of all parts like how much each part would add up to like if you say a ratio of uh, where am i like if you said a ratio of three to four that means all together there are seven parts and you'll see as we do the question and or you may just need to develop a relationship as one of the keys and then at the end of the day you'll end up for find, finding for one so Time and time again in this paper, you'll see me finding for one. I think we can jump into the past paper's questions day. Hey, what? January 2020. Sorry, 2010. Question 1C. The ingredients for making pancakes are shown in the diagram above. Ingredients for 8 pancakes, 2 cups. So you understand this is going to be like a real life example. Ryan wishes to make 12 pancakes using the instruction given above. This is the ingredients for making 8, but he want to make 12. Calculate the number of cups of pancake mix he must use. Establish a relationship. So what we're going to do is activate the third key where we'll establish a relationship between the pancake mix and how many pancakes you have. So like if you want to make 8 pancakes, that's not a spell, pancakes, pancakes. We expect to use 2 cups pancake mix all you see now up there in the corner a tiny tiny so eight pancakes make two cups pancake mix nice he want to make 12 so how much cups of pancake here you understand what we do we establish a relationship eight pancakes two cup pancake mix is that is a ratio you know? it's like it's like eight to two and ratios are really glorified fractions you know? so when you're finding for one if you want to make one pancake yeah the next this is the most important key defined for one key it's two over eight cups you need when you're finding for one i want to say to you all today it's a division process when you're finding for one let me say three mangoes cost fifteen dollars how much is one mango fifteen divided by three it's a dividing process so if you're making eight pancakes two cups 
pancake mix do get type of the numbers you're dividing you're gonna do 12 pancakes by Ryan boy so his 12 pancakes are gonna cost him the uh, 2 over 8 multiplied by 12 pancake mix and this is how much for 1 and this will be how much for 12 1 by that and uh, when I break down this I get 4 there and then I get 4 into that 3 so I get 3 cups pancake mix and this was a really easy question but you get to see the idea of how to solve all these ratio questions kind of in this first question what a pick what a pick two marks for that part two Nisha used five cups of milk to make pancakes using the same instructions how many pancakes did she make it's going to be the same setup well establish a relationship now they establish a relationship so the relationship I want to establish here is if I use one and one third cups of milk, I can make eight pancakes. That's from here, right? One and one third cups, eight pancakes. That's how much for eight. And how much? How much cup she use? Let's use five cups. So five cups of milk. But wait, before you find for five cups, find for one cup. It'll be eight divided by one and one third. On my calculator, 8 divided by 1 and a third is 6. So this is defined for one process, which is a division process. So 6 pancakes. So 1 cup of milk will make 6 pancakes. How much cups she use? Let's use 5 cups. And immediately you can see now you're going to just multiply up and get 30 pancakes. Another 2 marks in the bag. And right, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Actually, that three marks in the bag. Good thing, good thing. Next question. Smiley orange juice is sold in cartons of two different sizes. The better buy. So this is a better buy question from June 2013. Which side carton of orange juice is the better buy? Justify answer. How will you do this question? How will you do this question? The better buy questions are done using a kind of um, proportion finding for one issue. So you, you're kind of going to find how much one milliliter costs here and how much one milliliter costs there, and that will be it. So let's say for the 350 mLs, 350 mLs costs $420. 420 where I remember that from. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so 1 mL will cost 420 divided by 350. Calculate the time 0 0.012 of a dollar. Mm, for the 450 mL, 450 mLs is equal to $5.13. So in this scenario, 1 ml will be the 513 divided by the 450. Calculate the time. And this is 0 0.0114 of a dollar. Using our expert decoding skills, we can see that this one is expensive. What is the thing? More expensive than this guy. So this one is more expensive than that. So the better buy would be the 450 mLs. And you would justify your answer by saying it's less expensive. So something like this. And once you're working to show to back it up, you're good to go. See how you find for one coming sweet day? It coming sweeter. Sweet. Next question is June 2014. Question 1B. As I said, I'll leave this on my website so you can just go and do them for yourself too. Concrete tiles are made using buckets of cement, sand, and gravel mixed in the ratio. Ah, so this is it. So we get the three style of questions here. Yeah. You had the... um. The, the real life example you yeah, have the best buy and then you have a just a classic ratio question how many buckets of gravel are needed for four buckets of cement how many buckets of gravel need for four buckets of cement so intricate intricate once again we are looking to establish a relationship and we want the relationship between the gravel and the cement there it is the one so the thing with ratios is that they go respectively now cement sand gravel one four six cement sand gravel so cement and gravel alone if we just looking at cement and gravel alone is like one to six so what kind of relationship is that boy cement to gravel is like one to six therefore if we have four buckets of cement Notice this is already a one, a one, a fine for one relationship here. It will be equal to six times four, right? You found for one already, so you don't need to divide, you just multiply up. 
Nice, 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 nice. If 20 buckets of sand are used, how many buckets of each of the following will be needed? Cement, gravel. So we want to look at the relationship sand to cement first and then sand to gravel. Sand to cement, sand to cement is 4 to 1. Uh, well, I could put 1 to 4, but I want to put the cement on the next side. So I'll put sand to cement, you understand? So let me try this one. So sand to cement is 4 to 1. And since we want to be out here using 20 buckets, hold up. In this case, we need to find for one first. So one bucket of sand, division process. Quarter bucket of cement, 20 buckets of sand. Would be equal to the quarter multiplied by the 20. That's five buckets of cement. You all understand that? Huh? You understand the techniques that I do in here? It will take a little practice, eh? it will take a little practice to know just to put how to set your relationship that you're establishing and just to get a little comfortable with defining for one process. You notice it's always a division, 4 was 1, so then 1 would be 1 divided by 4, and you see that every time we find for 1, 450 was 5 to 10, so 1 is 5 to 10 divided by 450, similarly here, we're going good, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like all the learning things. Similarly, if we look at our ratio again. Um, cement sand gravel and we want to get sand to gravel we'll see that it's like a four to six relationship that could break down but we can just stay with the same four to six four to six fine for one the one bucket of sand is equal to your divide right the six will come and get divided by the four buckets of cement hey i'll leave all the wood buckets from up there somewhere here i'll leave all the wood buckets but I don't think take away no max for that. I just more weekend day. And if it was 20 buckets of sand, we just need to multiply now. Once again, 30 buckets of cement. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So if it was 20 buckets of sand, so if it was 20 buckets of sand, you need to multiply by the 20. And once again, 30 buckets of cement, the 4 cancel into the 20, give you 5, 6 by 5, 30. Lovely. If a question like that comes for exams, I feel you, I feel you could handle it. Let me go to the next one. Another best buy question. Better buy question. Better buy. This one, this one, this one, this one. Only already catch the idea, right? We'll, we'll check and see how much each gram costs. For a small jar, 150 grams is $214. We get that ready. See it? Bang, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. Fine for one. Calculator. Watch it. Smile. That's one gram, how much one gram costs? The larger jar, B. 400 grams or 650. Find for one. It's a division process. And which is the bigger number here? This is the bigger number? Yeah, that's the bigger number. This one, wait, the bigger jar more expensive this time, boy. Bigger jar more expensive. So the better buy is small jar. Since it is less expensive and you already showed that one gram in the small jar only costs 14 cents. What is that? One. 1.426 cents or something like that but this one costs 1.6 cents Ooh, more money more money <laughs> that noise that in the background is a parrot i apologize june 2016 and once again yet another best buy questions this time you have to do three fine for one this is getting repetitive but the minute something in math starts to get repetitive, you know, in a good place. So for all of them, what we're doing is just finding how much one milliliter would cost. It's always a division process when you're finding for one. Now we can examine them all and make our judgment. One milliliter is just 0 0.012 here. Wait, 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 I left out a zero here. One millimeter for the 450 is 0 0.011. That's that 118. This is 116. Oi, the 500 have it. The 500 is the best. So the best, you'll see that that's the smallest number. Best buy is the. I know we're writing this and I realized what I really ask here is for the most cost effective buy. So I didn't really need to use the word best buy. I can just say the most cost effective buy is the 500 ml. And then here's my weekend. There's a few more to go. Three more. This is a strange ratio question, but read it, read it. 
it's come 2020 yeah, not too long ago and neon light flashes five times every 10 seconds show that the light flashes four three two zero zero times in one day you know people was real talking about this question after the exam and some people get it wrong the two main ways that students solve this question was like the kind of five times ten seconds find out how much in a minute find out how much in an hour find out how much in a day which is cool you could also do a finding for one technique for this let me show you establish a relationship and you'll find that every 10 seconds we have five flashes so theoretically in one second there's like five tenths the dividing process of a flash in one day we have 60 seconds in a minute 60 minutes in an hour 24 hours in a day 86,400 seconds so you know what that means after you find for one you multiply by the 86,400 Five tenths is like a half, a half is like divide by two. If I divide that by two, I will get four, three, two, zero, zero. And this just means you prove what it is they was trying to fit to prove. Four, three, two, zero, zero. So you can actually use the find for one process in this and it's pretty simple. Or you can just use the other method, which I think most students use. Five times every 10 seconds, then they will go how many in one minute, how many in an hour, how many in the day. So you just kind of multiply going up your road. Two more quick questions to do and then we'll do some multiple choice sample questions so in 2021 this one was really easy i mean this is just a multiplication process one sheet is this so 75 sheets will be 75 times that multiply and just make sure you get a number there. tell me before you get through the ratio of teachers to male students to, okay here's a solid ratio male of teachers to male students to female students okay so you know what each number here represents right teachers male students female students total number of students in the school is 630 how many parts this mean that's the 17 and the 18 so the student parts in the ratio is 17 plus 18 which is 35 all day every day which means 35 parts really represent the 630 number fine for one the golden rule one part mean 18 persons and how many parts is for teachers three the number of teachers will be 18 times 3 54 teachers yo so that's a look at the last 10 years of ratio questions it's a thing of beauty and i hope you can understand that the key idea is really to just find for one find for unit let me spend a couple minutes and party with some sample multiple choice questions just to you know finish strong John Peter and Mary shared a sum of money 249. John and Peter received 360 together. How much money was shared all together? This term and that term represent how much John and Peter received. So that's six parts all together. So this six parts equals 360. You understand what we're doing here? We establish the relationship. We find for one. Once we find for one, we could solve anything. How much money was shared all together? That's all the parts. That's two, four, and six. So that's fifth two, four, and nine, sorry. So that's fifteen parts. 15 parts will be the 1 part times 15, 60 times 15, 900 dollars. Next. 560 is shared in the ratio, 2, 3, 90 difference between the largest and smallest shares. Well, let's find out how much for one share. Add up all of this, we get 14 parts. And this 14 parts here means 560 dollars. So one part will be the 560 divided by the 14, same thing all the time and earlier. Same thing all the time. Same thing all the time. Fine for one. Is the way. I keep saying it. Forty dollars. I should actually not have a S there. One part. Yeah. By stitch maths, not English. And from the ratio, the smallest share is eighty dollars. Well, two parts, right? So forty times two. Largest will be forty times nine. Difference between three sixty and eighty is two eighty. Another thing we could have done is 9 take away 2 is 7, that's 7 parts is the difference, so 7 times 40 is also the same as 280. Number 3, Anna and Betty share the sum of money, 2 to 3 respectively, Anne received 120, what it was Betty's share. Well, Anne received 2 parts, right? So her 2 parts is worth $120, so you're fine for 1. Wow, the same thing again. That's like $60. So Betty's share, which is 3 parts, will be 3 times 60, which is... 180. All these answers, let's see so boy. Oops, I repeat. 
We're nearing up the end in a school duration of the number of pupils to so the number of teachers is 20 to 1. If the number of pupils is 840, how many teachers are there? 20 parts represents the number of pupils and that's like 840. So one part will be 840 divided by 20, which is 42. And since the number of teachers is only one part, it is just 42. So next question, we're going to share 350 in this ratio. All we need to do is get the sum of all the parts, which is 7 parts. And that must be equal to the full 350, which means one part is equal to $50. And the smaller part, which is 2, will be 2 times that $50, which is C. Here's a nice little best buy question. Which amount is the best buy? So we divide up all of these. I'll leave that for you all to divide up all of these. You see which one gives you the best buy now? See which one? Boom, bam, bing, bang, bing. And it's nice numbers to divide. So nothing too hard. One last one to leave with you. 540 beads are shared in the ratio 4 to 5. The larger share of beads will be one similar to this already. Let me just come out the way so you can see the options. Love and lessons. This brings us to the end of ratio questions here. If you benefited from this, be sure to press like. Be sure to subscribe. We have more stuff coming. Let me know what topics you want us to do. I'm watching this screen here because I'm this screen here. I'm supposed to be watching on here so you can make some connection. Press like. What topics? Struggle, you're struggling with narrow classes. As usual, these videos are meant to go hand in hand with my long form classes. If you want to join those classes, it's just 200 TT a month. Still, just 200 TT a month. Join the student hub. We have all the seats and all the classes there for you. So you can be like a star. Bless up.